Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how consuming alcohol affects your skin. If you clicked on this video thinking I was going to be covering the presence of alcohol in skincare products, no, but I will list down below in the description box a video I did in the past on that topic so you can find it there. In considering the effects of alcohol on your skin and overall health, you have to take into account the amount of alcohol being consumed and honestly, throughout the medical literature, this is loosely defined. When you drink alcohol, your liver is primarily responsible for dealing with it, although other organs throughout the body handle it to a certain extent as well. In the liver, alcohol is converted to something called acetaldehyde using an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. That acetaldehyde is an intermediary metabolite in the detox of alcohol, but it's actually very inflammatory and a known carcinogen. Uh, a lot of the adverse effects of alcohol, not only on your skin, but on your total body are due to that guy. Your liver then converts that to a compound called acetate using an enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase. But when you consume large amounts of alcohol, that that reaction, it can only go so quickly and that acetaldehyde does build up and has some negative consequences to your health. It generates a lot of free radicals that can damage your membranes in different organelles, create a lot of inflammation throughout the body. And as this enzymatic reaction is going on in your liver, uh, how does that happen? A compound called NAD takes those hydrogens and becomes a compound called NADH. High levels of NADH in the mitochondria of our cells is actually pro-inflammatory as well, generating more free radical damage that can damage the DNA. That burden of free radicals that is generated when you consume moderate to heavy amounts of alcohol overwhelms your antioxidant systems and can really render you very susceptible to free radical damage, especially if you happen to be drinking outside. It's like a double-edged sword. You are depleting your antioxidant stores through the alcohol, and you're exposing your skin to something that generates a lot of free radical damage in the skin. Acetaldehyde also triggers the release of epinephrine, norepinephrine, histamine, and bradykinin. These things cause your heart rate to go up, they cause vasodilation, and in the skin, that vasodilation manifests as increased redness and flushing. And while that's typically transient, consuming moderate to excessive amounts of alcohol on a regular basis can eventually, with time, lead to a more persistent flush that lasts even after you've stopped drinking, and it also can trigger broken blood vessels in the skin. Because alcohol triggers a release of histamine, it also can kick off a flare of what's called urticaria, the medical term for hives. Now, there are many different types of urticaria out there. It's a miserable thing to deal with, and alcohol is a known trigger and exacerbating factor. It leads to itching, redness, and as you scratch the skin, you develop more hives because that causes more release of histamine. And alcohol is something you completely should avoid if you are coping with hives because it definitely will make them worse. The other thing about consuming alcohol is that it's pretty dehydrating. Uh, it can leave you pretty dehydrated. As a matter of fact, that's what's responsible for a lot of the symptoms of a hangover is simply dehydration. Your body has to do a lot of work to cope with it and alcohol is a diuretic, meaning it makes you go to the bathroom a lot more. So your total body water goes down and that will show up on your skin pretty quickly and lead to something called tenting. Basically, when your skin's really dehydrated, if you pinch it, it will stay pinched in a tent form shape uh, for a little bit and not go bounce back right away. So it decreases kind of the firmness and shine in your skin just by dehydrating it. Now that's obviously not going to be permanent, but it is something that shows up right away, that, those dehydrating effects. But what I want you guys to understand is that when you consume alcohol, because it depletes a lot of your natural antioxidant stores, it makes you more at risk for free radical damage from other things like sun, pollution, and smoking. Therefore, if you spend a lot of time consuming alcohol outdoors in the sun, especially if you live in a large city with a lot of pollution, and God forbid if you smoke, 
whoo, that really is a lot for your skin. You overwhelm your antioxidant stores. That leads to free radical damage in the DNA in your skin cells, tons of inflammation, and that can really affect the levels of collagen in your skin and ultimately definitely contribute to the formation of wrinkles. There are some studies that show that moderate and excessive consumption of alcohol leads to more prominent signs of aging, including under eye puffiness, loss of mid face volume, sagging skin, crow's feet, glabellar lines, static forehead lines, all of these things can be more obvious with excessive alcohol consumption, meaning greater than eight drinks per week, and can also be more, some of them are also more obvious with just as little as one to seven drinks per week. That's a lot of a variation, one to seven. Um, I wish in that study they had, they had dialed it down to, to a more precise numbers, but anyways. However, there are some other studies that don't show this. There was a twin study that showed no association with alcohol consumption. I think the devil is really in the details though with these studies and there's only so much they can tease out. What type of alcohol were people consuming? Are they consuming alcohol and also smoking? Uh, so maybe some of that is due to the adverse effects of smoking tobacco on the skin. Do they, do they have a skin type that's more susceptible to UV damage? So they, you know, they're, they're seeing more, more adverse effects. It's, it's really hard to tease out those things. And again, what type of alcohol are they consuming? There's a pretty decent body of literature to support that uh, having a few alcoholic beverages per week can have beneficial outcomes on your total body health. Again, reducing cardiovascular disease and whatnot but it's a small amount of alcohol per week. These other studies though that showed more prominent aging, that was really more associated with consuming greater numbers of drinks. So we really need to tease out how much. And also a big thing is your genetics. Some people don't have the genetics to deal with alcohol as well as others. We only know so much about this, there's a lot more to learn. But for example, people of Asian descent, they have less activity of that enzyme that converts the acetaldehyde to a less reactive form. So they have more acetaldehyde buildup when they consume alcohol. That's why they often will experience redness with consuming just a few sips of alcohol because the enzyme machinery is just not, you know, their genetics are, are different and therefore they're more likely more at risk for some of the negative consequences of alcohol even with with modest consumption it's clear that wine is rich in something called resveratrol which is an antioxidant that can have benefit to the human body to what extent some of the studies showing the fact that modest consumption of alcohol is associated with some health benefits, to what extent those benefits are due to maybe more the consumption of red wine, which is rich in this antioxidant. It's hard to say, we need more, we need more studies to clarify that. But it is very clear that consuming even moderate and of course excessive amounts of alcohol generates a ton of inflammation in the body. This inflammation can worsen acne and obviously will also worsen rosacea. Rosacea is an inflammatory skin condition that's very sensitive to consuming alcohol, partially because of the increase in histamine that results in vasodilation and flushing. People with rosacea are really sensitive to that. And I think those people you know, they really, have, they, they really have to be careful with their alcohol consumption. And people will often consume alcohol in combination with really sugary drink mixes. And I have a video talking about the negative effects of consuming sugary foods and sugar's contribution to aging of the skin. So you kind of get a double, double hitter there. You get the inflammatory bolus from the sugar, you get the inflammatory bolus from the alcohol, and that really can have some negative consequences that pretty immediately show up on your skin, especially if you are prone to acne breakouts. Even if you're not really acne prone, you may find that you're suffering without acne if, you, if you're in a period of time where you're drinking a lot of alcohol. Alcohol also can increase your risk of a sunburn because it overwhelms your body's 
antioxidant capacities within the skin and so you're more vulnerable to damage from ultraviolet radiation having a sunburn is kind of a clue that you really just done a lot of damage in your skin that's going to have a, a pro-aging outcome as well as put you at risk for skin cancer so definitely protect your skin from the sun if you're going to be consuming alcohol outdoors really important alcohol also has some pretty negative consequences on your sleep it decreases your REM sleep meaning you're not going to get good quality sleep so moderate to excessive consumption of alcohol will start to creep into your sleep when you are sleep deprived that alone is associated with more severe skin aging and when you're sleep deprived your body doesn't have time to recuperate from a lot of the inflammatory stressors from just an ordinary day let alone a day of, of heavy drinking. Bear in mind that some of the things that we don't know have to do with the type of alcohol, the amount of alcohol, the conditions in which the alcohol is being consumed, and the genetics of the person. One day, maybe in the future, we will have a blood test that tells you exactly how much alcohol you can safely consume to have health benefits and not harm. But I guarantee it's going to vary a lot from person to person, simply based on how genetics impacts how these different enzymes function and our ability to handle alcohol. I often will get comments on my videos like, well, you know, this is just kind of a cosmetic thing. There's more to life, etc." But you guys, your skin is a window to what's going on inside. Your skin is an organ system. And if it doesn't look so great, chances are some of the other organ systems are hurting as well. And the skin is kind of a cry for help. And following a day of heavy drinking, seeing those effects on your skin, just think, there's a lot going on internally as well as a consequence of those inflammatory mediators and free radical damage. The skincare industry would have you believe that looking good is all that matters, but your skin being in good health is a reflection of your total body health and what's going on inside. This is one of the things I love the most about dermatology is that the skin is very telling of a person's overall health and things that are going on inside. And simply by looking at somebody, you can make diagnoses. There are a lot of social consequences from drinking alcohol, namely in excess, motor vehicle accidents, abuse, missed days of work, decreased productivity, uh, quite a few things go on. More risk of adverse effects to your mental health uh, and, and so on. Given everything that's going on this year, the last thing anybody needs in 2020 is another downer. Um, so consider taking a step back. That being said, I do realize that other people, you know, maybe they're cooking more at home and enjoying different types of cuisine now and they enjoy having alcohol responsibly. It's up to every individual to make that decision for themselves. But if you are struggling with with alcohol. I'm going to put down in the description box some links uh, to free resources. If you are looking for help, I would encourage you to reach out to those. It's my personal opinion that a lot of it has to do with the culture that you are surrounding yourself with. Some cultures are going to be more conducive to appreciating mild to moderate consumption of alcohol, enjoying it with a meal, with family and social settings responsibly. Whereas other cultures celebrate binge drinking, which can definitely have some serious, serious consequences to your total health beyond just the way your skin looks. Um, so, you know, these nuances really matter. How you're consuming the alcohol and what's going on in your life. 2020 is a hard year for everybody. Um, so take that into account. This might not be a time where alcohol is going to serve you well. But again, that's up to each individual. That's what I can tell you guys about alcohol consumption and the skin. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.